Welcome to lecture 6 on the visualization of graphs. Today we want to find out how to gain orthogonal layouts of graphs. Orthogonal layouts are layouts such as this one here. The edges are only allowed to be drawn with horizontal and with vertical segments. These types of drawings we can find a lot in applications. For example, if we look at an entity relationship diagram here from the Open Graph Drawing Framework, this is often drawn with this orthogonal style. Also, for UML diagrams and for ornanigrams, that's what we usually use. Finally, for circuit diagrams, also often orthogonal layouts are used. And if you look at the layout of all the circuits on your mainboard, then you will see that most of those will also be drawn vertical or horizontal, and many of them also diagonal. We want to define this drawing style. We say that a graph is called orthogonal if the vertices are all drawn as points on a grid, the edges are represented as sequences of alternating horizontal and vertical segments, and pairs of edges are either disjoint or they cross orthogonally like here. But we cannot have any other edge that starts in this vertex and goes to the right. There are two observations we can immediately make. Since our edges all have to lie on grid lines, the bends also have to lie on grid points. Also, if we look at a single vertex, we can have one edge leaving it to the bottom, one to the left, one to the top, and one to the right. That means there can be at most four edges at every vertex without having an overlap. So our graphs must have degree at most four. There are some extensions to this drawing style if we want to generalize it to a larger degree. For example, we can allow at the start of the vertices that the edges have some overlap, like here. So we have three edges leaving to the top, and then at some point they split. Or we can try to draw these vertices larger, not as just a single point, but as a rectangle. And if that spans enough grid points, then we can also have more edges that leave in all directions. In order to handle these crossings, what we usually do is that we first planarize the graph. That means we fix some embedding of the graph, and if that induces crossings like here, then we take each of these crossings and place a vertex on it. And then we get a planar embedding of some other graph, but if we remove these dummy vertices later, then we have a drawing of the input graph again. That makes things a bit easier, because then we don't have to distinguish between vertices and crossings, but we can handle everything the same way. What do you think are the aesthetic criteria we want for this drawing layout? We don't want to have too many bends, so that the edges don't become too complex. We want the edges to be as short as possible, so something like this is not so nice, and we prefer a shorter edge like this one here. We want the width and the height or the area of the drawing to be minimized. We might want the edges to be drawn monotone. For example, this edge here goes upwards, so it's Y monotone, but this edge here is neither X or Y monotone, so again, this is not a nice edge that we want. And there are many other things that we want to do. Today, we focus on the number of bands and on the area. To this end, Tamasia in 1987 introduced a three-step approach, the so-called topology shape matrix approach. For that, we take as input uh, some graph in a standard representation, and in the first step in the topology step, we want to find an embedding of the graph. And during that, we also planarize it so that we have a planar embedding. That's a standard step that you often do when you have a graph, you first find some embedding and then you want to draw it somehow. And the optimization criteria in this step is to reduce the number of crossings or to reduce the number of vertices we have to add so that it becomes planar. In our straight line drawing styles, now we could immediately jump to the matrix part where we try to draw the graph straight line with minimum area, for example. But here, there's another step in between, the shape step. 
we first want to find an orthogonal representation. This orthogonal representation is not a drawing yet. It only tells us for every edge which directions to those segments go. So it tells us if we look at the edge from 1 to 4, it first goes up and then to the right. It tells us there is a 90 degree angle between these two edges. And it tells us this edge goes straight without a bend. This is the representation. And here we want to minimize the number of bends. And when we have this representation, then we want to get a nice drawing for it. And this is the metric step. Now we want to get our planar orthogonal drawing. And here the goal is to minimize the area. In this lecture we will assume that we have already done the first part. We already talked about this a lot in the first few lectures. And we focus on the shape and on the metric step.